You know, the craziest thing happened to me today. I actually had to explain to someone that Scarborough Fair isn't a love song. Do people just not listen to lyrics anymore? It's actually one of the oldest breakup songs we have. Depending on which variant you count, the song goes back to as early as 1650. However, that was a Rumpelstiltskin story where an elf and woman challenged each other to impossible tasks in order for her to stop a kidnapping. Because, well, elves were evil back then. The famous version by Simon Garfunkel is a more classic breakup song. Most importantly, the chorus is, She once was a true love of mine. Please note the past tense. This is a man singing about his ex like a troubadour Taylor Swift. However, this raises a question. Is this impossible? Can we beat Scarborough Fair and work our way back in Paul Simon's heart? So he says that if we want to get back together, here's what she's going to have to do. Number one, tell her to make me a cambric shirt, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme without any seams or needlework, and then she'll be a true love of mine. Alright, cambric is one of the finest linens you can make this side of silk. Witcher fans will note that it's the underwear of princesses. While these days cambric can be made of cotton, when the song was written, it was a plain weave white linen fabric that was then calendared using giant rollers to flatten and smooth the fabric. Thanks to the Industrial Revolution, you can easily get a cambric shirt. However, how can you make a shirt without seams? Shirts are full of seams. If you weave it on a loom, this is impossible. However, today, t-shirt machines exist that weave a continuous tube of cloth. So, what we need to do is get a t-shirt machine, load it with the finest white linen thread, and then make ourselves a tube top. We couldn't put any seams or hems on it, so it started to fray almost immediately from top and bottom. But it can be done. One seamless shirt of cambric. Check. Number two. Tell her to buy me an acre of land, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, between the salt water and the sea strand. Then she'll be a true love of mine. Trying to trick an elf in medieval Europe what I'd do is just buy an area of reclaimed land in the Netherlands. For centuries, the Dutch have pushed back the sea with blood and sweat. However, this is expensive. According to Farming UK, the Netherlands has the most expensive farmland in Europe, at nearly 30k per acre. That'll set us back a lot. So, let's try a different tactic. Assuming you can find a long enough beach that no one objects to you building on, you can achieve the same result by claiming a stretch of beach between the high tide and low tide, roughly 10 feet wide and 4,356 feet long. However, for stanza 3, we're going to have to grow crops. This is going to be a problem since our beach is constantly drenched in salt water. Nothing's going to grow on that. However, there's no requirement that it has to stay that way. To make this work, you need to put in an elevated grow bed. They'll stay out of the water, and you need to protect the wheat from salt spray. So, you'd need an elevated greenhouse on a pier. Alright, Walmart sells a 10 by 12 foot greenhouse for $104.99. So, we'd need 363 of these end to end. As the average distance between low and high tide is roughly 6 feet, we need to put them on a pier. We can use a prefabricated pier from Tommy Ducks. It's 24 by 4 foot, so we need 546 of them to cover this whole area. Now, we could probably get a better deal by buying in bulk or constructing it from scratch. However, we can't just pour a solid foundation or earthworks, because that would change the tide and invalidate the deal. But, with roughly $1.3 million in piers, and $38,000 in greenhouses, we could have our elevated greenhouse. Well, if we uh, steal the dirt from somewhere. But there's no getting around the law. In America, the beach below the tide line is legally public property. 
so anyone can sue you for cutting off a mile of beach land. Okay, so, acre of land in the Netherlands it is. Number three. Tell her to reap it with a sickle of leather, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, and gather it all in a bunch of heather. Then she'll be a true love of mine. All right, so we need to make sickle out of leather that we can use to cut our wheat and then tie it up with grass. Step one, make a leather sickle. I debated actually doing this, but I'm a discussion channel, not a craft channel. If this video gets 10,000 views, I'll actually try to make a leather sickle. Until then, you'll have to make do with this description. First, we have to cut out our blade. Take a real knife and cut out a sickle shape from leather. Cut the edge as close to a bevel as possible. Now, we need to harden the leather. Take your leather sickle, soak it in water for 20 minutes. Then you need to harden it by boiling, hammering, or baking it. After it's hardened, you can then sharpen it a touch further with a standard knife grinder. It won't be really hard or really sharp, but it might work to cut down an acre of wheat. However, you can cheat. You take your leather strap, put it on the stalk, and pull. You'll get a lot of dirt, and it might not be good for the soil, but it will work to get your wheat. Finally, we're at the victory lap, tying wheat with heather. This is actually not that hard. Heather it isn't a particularly strong plant, but if it's fresh picked, then we immediately wrap and don't overstretch it. This is very possible. So, can we beat Scarborough Fair? Surprisingly, yes. But you have to wonder, is dating Simon and Garfunkel really worth it? They're both nearly 80 now, and are both married. You should just go to Waxahachie instead. They're the better Scarborough Fair, with turkey legs and sword fights. And you don't need to do anything aside from buy a ticket. Thanks for listening, y'all.